I think when we're talking about impact and social media, I do believe, and AI, of course, I do believe that's where it lies in being able to understand your audience so well that you you can speak to them and it gets scary. You know, like nowadays, my husband and I will be watching TV and we will look at the ads and be like, oh yeah, I was talking about that with my friends. That's why we're getting this popped up. Like everything we talk about pops up. It feels very personal. And I think those are the companies that are using AI. I know those are the companies that are using AI correctly to serve and segment their audiences. Welcome to AI and Marketing Unpacked, where we simplify AI for impactful marketing. I'm your host, Mike Alden, here to guide you through the world of artificial intelligence and its transformative impact on marketing strategies. Each episode will break down AI concepts into manageable insights and explore practical applications that can supercharge your marketing efforts. Whether you're an experienced marketer just starting to explore the potential of AI, this podcast will equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to succeed. So tune in and let's unlock the power of AI together. Greetings program. Welcome back to AI and Marketing Unpacked, where I selfishly use this time to pick the brains of experts at keeping up with and integrating or layering artificial intelligence into social media, content, advertising, search, and other areas of digital marketing. Oh, and you get to learn too. Subscribe to be shown how to prepare yourself and your brand for this AI revolution and come out ahead. Today, the challenge we're diving into is the integration of artificial intelligence into social media content creation. Every marketer knows the struggle, staying relevant, creative, and effectively engaging in the fast evolving landscape of social platforms. But as algorithms evolve and user behaviors shift unpredictably, how do we keep up? How do we not only catch, but captivate our audience with compelling content? And importantly, How can we harness AI to not just compete with, but lead the charge in this high stakes game? That's exactly what Claudia Sandino is going to talk to us about. Claudia is a visionary social media executive with a robust track record, spending over 13 years known for blending strategic marketing skills with advanced digital tools. Claudia has pioneered methods that leverage AI to revolutionize engagement and content creativity. Her insights have empowered brands to transform their digital narratives and achieve remarkable marketing success. Today, Claudia is going to share her expertise on maximizing AI to enhance our social media strategies, making them not just productive, but pioneering. Hey, Claudia, welcome to the show. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me, Mike. So glad you're here. Can you start by just describing your journey in the world of social media marketing and how you began integrating AI into your strategies? Yeah, definitely. So I've been doing social media marketing for the past 13 years now, and so I've seen the industry grow, evolve, and really change. So my my goal is to always stay ahead of, of those trends and to really like soak them and try them and fail fast and like really see what works for the brands and the clients that I'm working with. And really naturally, it just became like something I did in my career. Like I was ahead, you know, when influencer marketing came up, I was working at Hilton Hotels and I was able to implement an influencer marketing program at Tiger Direct. I was able to work with YouTubers woo, back in the day when influencer marketing wasn't even a thing. And then, you know, I, I've just always stayed ahead. I, I've worked in highly regulated industries just to learn what that entails in marketing and social media. And it's really eye-opening. And naturally, you know, I, it brought me into Web3. And then being in Web3, I just like fell in love with AI. I was working for a startup that was building in the metaverse. And building the metaverse really opened my eyes of like, wow, like there's so much that's, gonna, that's to come. And then when GPT launched, I was actually lucky. And I I say that with so much pride. Like I was so lucky to be working at a startup because I was able to really dive head in, right, into GPT when before people were using it. And so for me, that's that's really how I've cut like how I've come to to embrace like being ahead of those trends. And also lucky that, you know, even though I have corporate world experience at a time when AI was really popping off. I was at a startup and I was able to really try these tools. And, you know, at a startup, you're the strategist and you also execute a lot. So these tools really helped us execute and really get, you know, those little minute details that I may not have time for, like bandwidth for it. And that's really what it was, you know, born out of as like, how can I maximize my time at the startup because I'm strategizing and also executing? Love it. I feel like we've got a lot of similarities 
in our background. During the pandemic, yeah. I was leveraging my experience with virtual events to help mm-hmm. all these other businesses turn their events into virtual experiences. And now that AI has come to the fore, that's where I'm bringing a lot of, of my experience and knowledge. So I'm looking for you to help us kind of understand what are some of the really impactful ways today that AI is being used to create content? So it's funny when I when I saw this, I was like impactful. I actually think impactful is a really strong word for AI, today's AI. I do believe it's being advertised as, as more than it, it is. I, with that being said, I believe we are the ones creating that impact. You know, the people that are early adopters and like really trying to incorporate AI into their lives, into their work. I believe that's where the true impact lies is in the humans trying to make this the best, right? Even the billionaires that are competing to have the best AI out there. Like I, I, I believe that they're making that impact. We're making the impact and AI is kind of a product of that. You know, we're learning to collaborate and to live with machines. So I think I think the true impact lies in us, in us being able to recognize how and when and where we want to incorporate AI into our lives and recognizing also that it's everywhere, right? We can we cannot escape it and it's here to stay. So not fearing it, but embracing it. And I think that's where the true impact lies. And of course, you know, in addition to being able to help us maximize our our, t- our output and really optimize content, like optimize the data that we're, we're viewing and saving us time and making our, you know, our blogs better, our creatives better. Like, I do believe that it it is going to bring huge impact in the next six months to a year. But at the moment, to be honest, I'm not quite too impressed with the AI of today. And I think that's okay to say, as long as they don't come for me in a year. No, I, I love that you're kind of pushing back on the way that myself and others have to be transparent, have, have framed AI. So you're basically saying, look, I can't look at a piece of graphics, uh, an image that's been created and say, oh, that's super impactful just because yeah. it was created with AI. Is that, is that what I'm Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's how the image is created and how it's being used that could potentially be impactful depending on the individual and the application. Exactly. Great, perfect. Exactly. So with AI generating content, uh, how can brands be personal and authentic with this application? I really think that that the human drives this, right? Like a hammer is just a hammer until a human picks it up. So I think that with us being authentic, with us being the expert, like if you put the work of an expert versus the work of AI, easily you can tell that AI didn't really, you can see the difference. And as an expert, you know, I've been doing this for 13 years and AI has been learning the internet for 13 years. But when I'm creating a strategy and I ask uh, AI to do it first, they give me, you know, fluff. They give me fluff and I have to add the real meat in that. And knowing the difference, I think, is really important. And that's how you stay authentic. I have, I also think that learning how to use AI is important. How I use AI today is so different than how I used it six months ago. And I think that that's why the time is now to like jump in and and learn how to create true, authentic content with AI. I, nowadays, I, you know, I take a first draft first. I do the first draft of anything and then I give it to AI and we kind of work together until we get to a last draft. So it's almost like we're working, we're collaborating. And I think that's the true authenticity. I, at first, I'll be fully transparent. I remember writing a children's book with AI and not even like, not even changing a thing. And I look at that book nowadays and I'm like, wow, I really, really like relied on that a little bit too much. I really relied on AI a little too much. I should have really believed in myself and what I could produce. But at the time it was like super new and I was like, hey, I did everything for me. So I think that being authentic starts with the human using it and understanding that you are the creator and AI is just optimizing it. So I think that's really important. Yeah, I agree. I, we're talking to Andy Cryptodina on the next episode. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss yes. that one. And and he liked talking about how AI means average intelligence. Yes. Because what the AI doing is it's growing out from the internet. It's sucked up everything on the internet and it's giving you the average of all answers when you ask mm-hmm. for something. 
So to your point, oftentimes marketers who aren't really experienced in working with the AI, exactly as you described, they're just saying, hey, AI, I want this output. I want this blog post or whatever. They're just going to get fluff in response. Yeah. So I appreciate 100%. you pulling that out. Yeah. But now let's talk about the people we're talking to, right? How are we using or how are you using AI to help kind of understand and engage with different target audiences? And how, how is that helping you be more effective on social media? Yes. And I think... When we're talking about impact and social media, I do believe, and AI, of course, I do believe that's where it lies. In being able to understand your audience so well that you you can speak to them and it gets scary. You know, like nowadays, my husband and I will be watching TV and we will look at our ads and be like, oh yeah, I was talking about that with my friends. That's where we're getting this popped up. Like everything we talk about pops up. It feels very personal. And I think those are the companies that are using AI. I know those are the companies that are using AI correctly to serve and segment their audiences. Like I, you know, I saw it firsthand myself because I went from not having a child to having a child and seeing how those ads are just completely different Mm -hmm. and they just take over. So I, I believe that segmentation and understanding user one, right? So like understanding Claudia Sandino, the brands that I purchased from, that's where the power of AI lies. And the future is today, like there are companies already doing this, you know, obviously companies with huge budgets, then there's middle middle budget companies that are kind of like working towards this. And then we have the startups that want to get to that point, but we, you know, use tools or use different methods to get there. And that's really, truly the goal is to understand each person, like even at the startup, you know, at the startup level, we were using AI to understand exactly what the questions were or like how to serve our customer better by building chat bots and, you know, serving them for like what they need. So I think that 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 that's that's truly important is that as a social media marketer, your job is to really understand your audience and soak in it. And you can use AI for that now. And that's really important. I really love how you've contrasted just simple generative AI with these much more impactful. We're going to use that word intentionally. Yeah. Impactful uses. You know, we're talking on other shows with people use, talking about using AI for, to, to identify content gaps, oh. to you know, do really, really rich, important data analysis. And in this case, building user personas. There's a, there's a fun tool out there, an AI startup called Hey Levi. A friend of mine, Ruheen, has started that tool. She'll be on the show later on this year. And with that tool, the entire premise is here's how you can AI, use AI to build these really robust personas that will help you understand their pains, their goals, and in ways that even someone who's doing this full-time will find challenging because a full-time person, and most of us aren't, but if a full-time person is trying to develop personas, they're doing discovery calls, right? They're talking one-on-one with the individuals that make up their target audience, and they're trying to kind of ingest all the information they're hearing, whereas the AI is able to go out and look at everything, all the feedback, all the, all the data, all the reports, all the white papers on that particular segment of the audience and say, look, again, the average, but in this case, the average is great because we want to know on average, what are they really concerned about, right? What are they obsessed over? What are they struggling with? And so have you used any other particular tools to help you on this journey of understanding our target audiences? 100%. So just recently I was building a report and I was using metadata and also data from Sprout. And I was able to just like dump those PDFs into GPT and I asked them for trends and insights. It's funny because at first I actually asked it to give me insights and it it was kind of wonky, but then I realized that it wanted me to use the word trends, even though in our industry we use the word insights. So I changed it to trends and then it actually gave me some trends in the report. And I was able to, you know, kind of cut it short and go, it tells me like which posts to look at and I go straight to it. And then I come up with the actual trends, you know, like AI was able to kind of point me in the right direction. But if I would have submitted what AI said to my superiors, it would have been a complete bluff and it wouldn't have been like something important or even actionable, you know? So I think that's how I've been using it to help me. I'm not like completely relying on it. And then of course, I also use Looker Studio and Funnel.io to look at my data. And I think that's really important. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate the point about how you're using it to help you, right? Yes. You're not necessarily relying on it. We shouldn't. Uh, AI can make mistakes. It, we can make mistakes in how we're inputting and expecting output from AI, just like you said. If I didn't use the word trends, right, it, the response wasn't what I was looking for. So there's a little bit of give and take there. That's fantastic. Folks, we're talking with Claudia Sandino about how AI can help social media marketers do better work today. And I've got a few more questions for Claudia, but before I do that, I want to share with you an AI-powered tool that can ramp up all of your marketing. This episode of AI and Marketing Unpacked is brought to you by Magi, your gateway to making generative AI incredibly simple and accessible. Wondering how to seamlessly integrate AI into your marketing strategy without getting bogged down by complexities? That's exactly where Magi shines. It provides user-friendly AI solutions that empower marketers just like you to innovate and elevate your campaigns without needing a degree in data science. Imagine having the power to generate creative content, insightful marketing data analysis, or even personalized customer communications, all at the touch of a button. Magi isn't just about providing tools. It's about transforming your approach to marketing with AI that's tailor-made to be straightforward and effective. So whether you're looking to boost your content creation process or want deeper insights into your marketing performance, Magi makes it all possible with a few clicks. No fuss, no hassle, just results. Ready to simplify your AI journey? Visit Magi today to learn how their solutions can revolutionize the way you engage with your audience. Don't just market. Market smarter with Magi. Tap the link in the show notes. So, Claudia, we've we've kind of touched on a couple of things marketers shouldn't do, but let's just call it right out. What shouldn't marketers be doing with AI today? Uh, first one and the most obvious is definitely going to be relying on it. I look at AI right now as like an intern, to be quite honest with you. Like I said, I'm not really impressed with like the output of it. And I, I think that will change 100%. But I don't think marketers should rely on it or think that it's going to make their jobs easier also because it does not make your job easier. In fact, sometimes when I use AI, I'm learning how to use it in a different way or I'm using a different tool that I've never used before. So it actually takes longer for me to do the task. But I know that for me, that's important to learn how to use the AI and to really coexist with it. So I'll take that learning curve. So be mindful of like whether you're willing to take that learning curve or not, because it will take longer to do the task. So do not rely on it and do not think that it's going to make your job easier or faster sometimes. It does feel at the end of the day when you do get that like right response and something that's really helpful, it does feel like it. And there's like th those moments that that you're like, oh, wow, like this is this is why I'm using it. So I think that's really important for marketers to recognize. Also, don't just like jump in the trends like just because everyone else is doing it really see think about your client and your audience and whether that's something that will, will resonate or work with them i also think that the tool situation is something that's going to be addressed soon but there's just so many tools out there be very mindful of tools that are just kind of like plugins and don't really do much like I, I always, I, I, I've tried so many tools. And I t honestly always go back to GPT or Meta AI. Meta AI is my new favorite. Haven't tried Gemini yet, but I really like Meta's AI. So like I said, be mindful of the tools out there. Be very careful, be very careful because a lot of the tools are scams and really you're just paying top dollar for technology that's just not there yet and isn't going to really help you. I recently did that for a presentation AI tool. I paid the money. You have to pay up front to use it. Mm. And it just didn't deliver on what it was promising, you know? So be very mindful of that as a marketer, that the, a lot of the tools out there will charge you and it's not going to be what you it, were expecting. And then one last thing that I would say is that marketers should really be weary of their fear or their resistance to AI, right? Like, why aren't you using it? I think every marketer should be using AI on some level. And if you're not, I would really look within and find out why. Those are some fantastic pieces of advice. I've been, I've been taking notes. One of the things that I love that you said was treating the AI like an intern and understanding when you go into it that there's going to be a learning process. I mentioned, I told you at the outset, Claudia, before we started recording that, this is actually podcast number six for me. I've got five podcasts with the Gore Pulse, this one podcast under the social media brand. Now over at Gore Pulse, I have a paid virtual assistant. 
that I had to spend time training to help them understand how they could help me process and publish all these shows that I have going on there. And that took extra time out of my day. Once I'm done, now I just feed them the Asana task and they go and do it and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to mind them. I don't even have to ask them. It's just when the next asset is ready, they go and do the work, which is exactly how we can treat AI. And the one thing I want to also call attention to that you said was that the, the tools are all always improving. Yeah. And if those of you listening have not yet invested in one of the paid tools, and by paid tools, I'm not talking about the startups. I'm talking about the main large language yes. models, ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude. Mm -hmm. Metas is still free, if I'm understanding correctly, 100% yeah. across the board. But if you're not investing in one of the paid tools, that in itself is going to be a night and day difference. When I first started mm -hmm. using AI, I was using the free ChatGPT 3.5. And I, too, was like, eh, this isn't very impressive. The responses are just meh. But then once I started using Magi, which allows me to use all the other paid tools at their paid levels, and I saw the difference between ChatGPT 4.0 versus 3.5, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, okay, that's impressive. And of course, that unlocks other capabilities like custom GPTs or personas and that sort of thing. So I'm so glad exactly. you mentioned that because that's super important, right? 100%. I think knowing how to discern between the tools right now is really important. Like I'm building actually a master tools list that I'm going to be releasing in a few weeks. And it, it's been like a lot of research. I wanted to release this list like a while ago, but there's just so much research and so much noise. And, you know, so I, I really do feel like it's important for any marketer to discern between the tools right now. And that's your job, you know, right now is to tell your company which tools are important and which ones aren't. And you're so right. It's overwhelming. I had Scott Brinker from Chief Martech and from HubSpot on one of my other shows, the Martech show, because he just released his annual report on the state of the Martech landscape. And there was a 28% increase in marketing technology tools just from last year. And I'm sure it's no surprise wow. That was predominantly AI powered, AI driven tools. And he's not even counting all the custom GPTs because there's some debate over whether or not they're standalone tools or not. But the fact is, there's just so much, absolutely overwhelming. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that you're helping everyone understand hey, look, there are a lot of tools. We're going to build you this list. We'll get to that uh, when you release it. Definitely let us know. We'll share that. But since we're talking about tools, I'd love it if you could share just one AI powered tool or a tactic. Uh, that you're using today that our audience should absolutely stop what they're doing and go try this? Yes, 100%. So I really think if you're in social media, chances are you might use Canva. So I really think if you are a Canva user, really dive into what they're doing with AI. Like it truly is something that to me has been impressive to what they're trying to build and what they're doing currently. So I mean, tap into the tools that we already use as marketers that are incorporating AI, like Canva, Sprout Social, Social Baker. Like there's so many tools out there that I almost said wildfire. Wow. Okay. So there's so many tools out there that are incorporating it. I think you should check that out. Again, also on the big, the big ones like GPT, Gemini, Meta is free. So those tools are baseline. And then just like extra tidbits, I would say Looker Studio for me for data analytics has been a game changer. If you have a Pinterest strategy, 100% check out Pin Generator. Pin Generator is, again, like it's not going to be impressive, but you could just get a blog, drop it in there. It'll give you copy for 10 different pins and creative. The creative is not that good, but you will, and you will have to go in and change the copy, but it builds out the framework and it does, you know, it does save you some time. Again, downloading those PDFs and dropping them in the GPT and like getting that, getting that information first so it can help you look through the data. I think, oh my God, I'm like going off. I've lost my train of thought, but yeah, I, I think just honestly, screw like, screw all the tools, like, I think it's important to apply your philosophy to AI, to these tools. It's like the way that I approach everything in my job right now is like, can I use AI for this? And then I go and find the tool for that, right? So I'm not saying screw the tools. I'm saying like, I can go through a list of AI tools right now, but in six months, they might not be relevant or important to you. 
I think what's important to consider when choosing a tool is like the task, right? So for example, building out my report, I had never used AI for that, but I knew that I could. So I went ahead and tried and I did it. And again, like I said, there was a learning curve. I had to build a presentation recently and I was like, can I use AI for this? Yes, I found a tool. I used it. It, it was cool, you know? Um, I was talking to my friend then about the tool and he's like, oh, there's actually a better one. You can check this one out. And I checked it out and it was better and I liked it. So I think just being willing to learn and try and test and asking that question, can I use AI for it? And then you go to Google and you say, AI and task, right? Whatever the task is and see if there's a tool for it and try it. And, you know, like, I know I just said the opposite advice, like don't waste your money, but to me, it's not a waste of money. To me, it's testing, right? And as marketers, we have to spend a lot of money on testing. I couldn't agree more. And again, you're echoing the same advice uh, from, from Andy Crestino, yeah. which is the, the next episode, which is terrific. He's saying the exact same thing. Right. Think about the tasks that you're already doing. In his case, it was analyzing spreadsheets filled with content and URLs within a certain website and the performance of that content. Well, he's now able to feed that into the AI. And the one thing that he really eloquently mentioned was that humans are really poor at identifying what's missing. Yeah. Right. It's hard for us to conceive what we don't see. But for the AI, that's no problem whatsoever. So I, I really appreciate that you're echoing that point. I love that you brought up Canva. I recently re-upped my paid subscription to Canva because nice. I'm really excited to, to jump in and test their AI capability personally. My personal accounts have been free for a long time. I've got a paid account through Agoraphal. So personally, I really want to experiment. And I want you to share with me later what the presentation software was because I was in a crunch. I had to pull together a presentation Monday afternoon to deliver on Tuesday. And I was like, surely there's an AI tool that can help me do that. And maybe I was going about it differently than expectation because I'd already written out the outline and, and the talking points. I just wanted to push that in and, and have it generate some slides. And I wasn't able to find something that easily did that for me. So I just went back to Canva and built the slides the way I would normally uh. do. But to your point, again, there's, there's all kinds of tools. There's all kinds of applications. Think first about what it is you're doing today and then imagine how AI can potentially help you with that. So exactly. I want you to think about what's coming. And I know this is so dangerous with AI because stuff is literally changing every single week. My favorite podcast is Paul Ratzer and Micah puts the artificial intelligence show, which they talk about what just happened last week. And that is not a 30 minute podcast. You're, you're sitting there for an hour and a half listening to yeah. everything that happened just in the last seven days. But that aside, what do you think is coming in the next 12, six, just six to 12 months? that you're super excited about from an AI and marketing perspective? For me, all of it, and I feel, I know that feels like a cop-out answer, but it really truly is all of it because I can't truly predict what's to come, but I know that I'm in a state of learning and growing and it, it's only going to get better. And there's just being more money thrown at it by the bills. And I just think that like, it's all really exciting. Like I think of what we can accomplish with voice AI, right? And like, what it can do to the creator economy and marketers. Like if I can have an AI version of myself create con create like some branded content for me, like that would be incredible, right? I think about, I have, I have a new, I, he's not a newborn. I have a son that's one now, right? And I think about what will happen when I'm no longer on this earth and like how there could be an AI version of me that just collects all of this information of what I put out in the internet. And it's like something he can, someone he can engage with. That's like truly a collection of me and my thoughts. Like I'm so careful about what I put out in the internet because I think about this of the future robot of myself that I want it to be good and say nice things. <laughs> I love that you mentioned that. And I don't know how many of you listening are Star Trek or sci-fi fans, but Star Trek just finished their Discovery series. And one of the close to the last episodes, the doctor on that episode is talking to a recreation of his grandmother. Exactly what you just described. But, you know, the writers were thinking, oh, this is literally a thousand years in the future. That's where that particular show is set. I think you're right. Within a few years, we'll be able to do things like that. We'll be able to feed the AI so much information about ourselves, our expressions, our tone of voice, things that we've said, things that we've written. Yeah that it'll be able to recreate a 
really believable and functional facsimile that can talk to us the way we would have talked at that time. And I couldn't agree more with just your overall perspective. I mean, Sam Altman has said the chat GPT we're using today is the dumbest chat GPT we'll ever have to endure. Yeah. And as crazy it is that that's to say that it's true. The AI that we're dealing with today is dumb in comparison to what we're going to have in six to 12 months. So I appreciate that perspective. I just have one more question for you, Claudia. This has been so much fun. I want to know what final advice, tips, best practices, what would you want to share with the marketers who are listening today, particularly if they aren't yet diving into AI, whether it's personally or professionally? Definitely, I would say be willing to learn, be in a state of learning, right? Like nobody can call themselves an AI expert right now. Everyone that you're interviewing is in a student's seat, right? And and I believe that that's really important to accept because that takes the fear away from things too. Like, don't be scared to just try it. I believe GPT and like meta, go to meta.ai, like get GPT. That's your gateway into AI, right? Those are your gateways and start small. You don't have to know all the tools on day one. Like just start with basic prompts, go ahead and get together with AI, get intimate because if marketing is your job, you're going to have to use it. So you might as well start now because the sooner you start, the better. Stay curious, you know, start small, stay curious, experiment and test. Always be experimenting, always be testing. Like I pushed the limits of AI, just how my toddler just pushes my limits, right? Like the other day, <laughs> and I'm glad that he's a reminder of like pushing my limits, you know, on a daily basis because I do it with AI and I take it out on it. Like the other day I told AI to be profesh because I was feeling lazy and I didn't want to write out professional. So I was like, let me see if it understands what I say. So I'm like, be profesh. And it, it understood. <laughs> and immediately to me, I was asking it for a tone change and it, it did it. So I think like have fun with it. Like I use AI to plan my toddler's meals and for reporting, right? Like I use it for all parts of my life. Pri focus and also I, I also feel like this has to be said and like whatever industry you're in, learn and understand how ethics and AI intertwine. And we are, like I mentioned, we are the humans creating this technology and advancing it and really driving it. So really think about ethics and everything you do and not like in a way where it's on you and you have to change the world and be the most ethical person. It's more of like, how does this apply, apply to my industry and how will it affect me? And how can I, how can I be better at like contributing to the positive aspects of it? So I think thinking about that all the time is really important, especially in marketing where like we have to do questionable, we've had to do questionable things way back in the day. So like now with AI, it's getting dangerous. So be careful out there, guys. Fantastic. <laughs> advice absolutely and and the one thing i'll just add on because I, I loved your concept about pushing back or not pushing back but just pushing the boundaries of yeah. the ai but as a parent i'll be the first to admit i have a limit to which my children <laughs> will push me and <laughs> they can push beyond that to their own well the ai doesn't have that yeah. right so the ai is not going to yell at you and refuse to work with you for saying profesh or exactly. anything else that you might try to push it you can't break the AI, mm -hmm. you just can't. So don't worry about that. Go ahead and push those boundaries with no consequences, which is pretty fun to say. And I appreciate you so much saying how important it is to have ethics and concerns. That's one of my core ideas that I like to try to pass on to businesses that they need to have people who are thinking about that on behalf of the business. How are we using AI internally? Who is using AI? Who is using what tools? Have we thought about whether or not... <laughs> At a, at a core level, do we really need 18 people to have licenses for these tools and spend that kind of money? But more importantly, yeah. are these the right tools for organization? Do they know how to use it responsibly? Do they understand what they should and should not do? Should not share proprietary information into a public GPT? Some of us say, of course we shouldn't, but not everybody knows that. Not everybody mm -hmm. understands how these tools work. So I, I appreciate you underscoring that, that I'm very important point. Claudia, you have been absolutely phenomenal. This has been so much fun. For folks who want to learn more about you, where can they go to follow you and, and learn more and get maybe your help? Definitely. So I am on LinkedIn, very active. Claudia Sandino on LinkedIn. 
it's you just go to the link it's slash social media claudia and yeah i hope to hear from you guys send me a dm i'd love talking about ai honestly so please message me find me on linkedin claudia sandino and i look forward to hearing from everyone and meeting everyone i know that ai is going to incredible places and i'm going with it and i'm going to bring it along with me and i'm excited for the journey right this is these are the moments that like help us savor it Terrific. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you all of you for listening. That's all we've got for today, but don't forget to find the AI and Marketing Impact podcast on Apple and leave me a review. I'd love to know what you think. Until next time, welcome to The Grid. Thanks for joining us on AI and Marketing Unpacked. I hope today's episode has inspired you and given you actionable insights to integrate AI into your marketing strategies. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and consider leaving a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts and answer any questions you might have. Don't forget to join us next time as we continue to simplify AI and help you make a real impact in your marketing efforts. Until then, keep innovating and see just how far AI can take your mark. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic day.